Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. If you like design and using 3D printing to solve real world problems and not just printing trinkets, this channel's for you. So what I've got on the bench this week is a jig that I designed for boring the holes uh, in a door to install either a, uh, a lock set or a deadbolt. Um, I had the need to install a deadbolt in a steel commercial door and I had a set that I bought years ago from either Lowe's or, or Home Depot, I don't even remember, that was the style that sort of clamped onto the end of the door. And it never worked right. I used it a handful of times and it got the job done, but it would always move around. Uh, there was just no way to get it tight enough on the door that it wouldn't slip um, or sort of bend out and then you'd be drilling at a weird angle. Uh, so uh, the, the drill bit that came with it was also uh, worn out. This thing is, uh, I don't know if the cameras can focus on that, but the teeth are all flattened down and it, it, all it does really is just sort of slide around on steel or just smoke on wood. So I thought, all right, it's time to go get a new one. So I went and I looked at what was available um, at Lowe's and all the designs were really similar to the one that I had. Uh, they just didn't look that good. I mean, to be fair, they were compact, but they didn't look like they were really gonna hold up, uh, particularly for drilling a thick steel commercial door. So I thought, you know what, I think I can do better. Uh, so I designed this, and the first thing I'll note is it is substantially larger than what's commercially available. That is on purpose. Uh, I wanted to design something uh, that accommodated both the, a standard uh, 60 millimeter or 2 and 3 eighth back set as well as a 70 millimeter 2 and 3 quarter back set, uh, which is more common on commercial doors, uh, that also had plenty of room on either side to use a standard set of strong uh, quick grip clamps instead of relying on just squeezing the door or in some cases some of them actually screw in uh, from the end which can create other problems uh, as well and potentially damage your door or damage the holes for the the, uh, the the striker plate. So this is what I came up with. Uh, this is in PLA plastic and rather than grip the door it just essentially has a fence that runs down the length uh, that lets you line it up to the end of the door and then drill at either your 60 millimeter or 70 millimeter uh, back set. Uh, you can use these to either line up on the position uh, if you already have a latch plate and you just need to drill the door for a deadbolt, or if you're putting in a handset or a deadbolt, uh, you drill your hole and then you just stick a pencil in here to mark the position, uh, the center point of where you're gonna drill uh, from the end. So rather than trying to explain this further, just holding it here, uh, let's go take a look at the door. Oh, and before I do that, this has a second part as well. So these hole saws have uh, quarter inch pilot bits, or at least most of them do. Uh, so I went ahead and I picked up a bearing that it's quarter inch on the inside. I want to say I think it's three quarter on the outside. Uh, but point being, it doesn't really matter what the outside diameter is. You could adjust this to, you know, to fit any bearing size that pressed in. Uh, but the center hole being quarter inch means that my pilot bit will go and it'll spin on this bearing here, giving me a nice straight starting hole, particularly on steel where even if I hit it with a center punch, it's still gonna wanna walk around a little bit. And this presses into uh, either one of the back set holes uh, before you start drilling. You drill your pilot hole and take this piece out and then drill with the rest of the hole saw. So let's, get, let's go over to the door and I'll show you how this works. Okay, so here we are at the door and this door as you can see has a lock set already installed. So let's pretend we wanted to add a deadbolt to this door. You could also use this to put the lock set in if that didn't exist yet, you'd just do that first. So typically a deadbolt is six inches above the center line of the lock set, but it does vary from door to door. So check your door first to see if you have any existing cutouts on the end or on the door frame and make sure you're aligning with those. So let's just assume that we're at six inches here and that I have marked this. The first thing I would do is determine my back set. So I can just put this right in the door and see that the, the, the closer back set, which is the 60 millimeter or two and three eighth, uh, lines up with the back set of the existing lock set. Uh, 70 millimeters is typically used on uh, commercial doors, but I've seen it in residential locations as well. Uh, also worth noting, uh, notice on this side of the door, if we did want to use the deeper back set, I wouldn't be able to get close enough to the doorknob. If, you, if you're going to use the larger back set with this tool, you simply flip it over and work from the other side of the door. So again, let's assume I've got the six inches marked here and I'm lining this up. Let me grab my clamps. 
Okay, so I'd line up on the line that I've marked across the door, or uh, if I already had the end marked or if I had the end drilled, I would just line that up in this window here. But let's assume that we don't have anything in the end of the door yet. I'm gonna put this on and I can take these two standard quick grip clamps and grip this guy very securely to the door. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is go ahead and mark the inside of this hole with a pencil. The reason for that will be apparent in a minute. Second thing you're gonna do is take this bearing insert and press this into place in the hole. It's a tight fit, but you wanna make sure you're all the way in and sitting flush against the door. Now normally we would have this chucked up in a drill, but I'm not actually gonna make a hole here, so just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna just hold it. Uh, but I would put this into the center of that bearing, and I would go ahead and start drilling into this door. And that bearing is gonna keep me dead center uh, where I wanna be for this pilot hole. Next thing we're gonna do is actually remove this off the door to make it easy to get this piece out. So we'll just loosen our clamps, slide this away, and now just with my thumbs, I can just push this piece out. Now I'm gonna line back up on the door with those marks that I initially made, clamp this back into position, And now, you know, you, you could actually probably just use the pilot hole at this point to drill the hole, but by putting this back in place, we now have a guide for the hole saw portion of this bit as well. And I wanted to mention, since I didn't buy a new jig kit that came with a bit, I had to purchase a bit, and it was really a blessing in disguise. Uh, rather than purchase just another inexpensive uh, bimetal hole saw, I picked up this Sterrett uh, carbide tipped hole saw and I drilled both sides of a commercial steel door with this and the carbide tips still look uh, exactly the same as it did new. Uh, this is probably a, a you know buy it for life uh, bit particularly if you're just doing the occasional uh, you know deadbolt and lock set uh, here and there even in steel doors. Uh, the key when you're drilling in, in steel doors is to go slow. If you've got a slow speed setting on your drill that's all you need. Uh, heat is the enemy. You don't want this guy to heat it up. You just want this guy to spin and take off chips. Uh, I drilled both sides of that door. Uh, I'll put up some pictures that I took, uh, but I drilled both sides of that door in a matter of, I don't know, one minute per side, just taking my time, and this bit still looks brand new. If you're still working with a, a dull old bimetal crappy bit, get one of these good sterrets. I'll put a link to this guy below. Okay, final thing that you would do is, assuming that we were adding a deadbolt to this door um, and we didn't have anything in the end already, I would just take a pencil and I'd reach into this window and there is, hopefully you can see it in there, there is like a, a straight section back and forth that is just large enough to either see through to line up with or to get the tip of a pencil through uh, to mark the door so that when you take this off, uh, you can go ahead and drill from the end of the door uh, for the, uh, the, the latch plate and the, the piece that comes out. So let's go take a look at the design for this and I'll discuss any considerations I made when putting it together. Okay guys, here's the design for this. And uh, as you can see, there's some lettering on here. Uh, it's the first thing I'll mention. So this identifies the two different distances of back set, both the two and three quarter 70 millimeter, um, as well as the two and three eighth 60 millimeter. Again, the 60 millimeter is typically used on residential doors and the 70 millimeter typically on commercial doors, um, but that is not always the case. So check your door uh, first. Don't just go uh, you know, drilling without checking. Um, there are two components here. Uh, the piece that holds the bearing prints separately, and you could adjust this to accommodate whatever size pilot drill and the outer size of the bearing that you pick up is. Um, all my pilot bits are quarter inch. I think that's fairly standard. I don't know what size a standard pilot bit is um, in the rest of the world, um, but uh, it, you could easily adjust this design to, to, to allow for differences in pilot bit size and bearing size. Uh, so that presses into either one of these holes. Uh, these fingers really serve two purposes. Uh, they allow you to line up on a horizontal line when you mark the door. Uh, they also keep this insert um, from spinning, even if this guy gets looser in this hole over time as the hole saw takes away some of the material 
uh, on this uh, on this bore. Uh, a couple other things worth noting in this design. Um, you can see the notch that I put on the inside of the corner here. I did that for two reasons. Uh, number one, so that if there's anything on the edge of the door that's sticking out, like maybe if the door has been painted a bunch of times um, and it has just kind of a paint drip line on the edge, which I have had on numerous doors I've worked on in the past, um, this allows this to still slip in and sit flush against the face of the door uh, and the end of the door. Uh, it also, I believe in this case, strengthens the design because you get rid of that hard stress point in the corner. Uh, normally, I would go ahead and to relieve that stress point, just put a, a, a relief along the whole edge, similar to what we have uh, here, uh, this section here. Uh, but if I did that, you know, if you had a door with a really straight edge, you wouldn't be able to get this guy flush. So I just thought that this was a good way to make sure that you're getting flush against both those faces and then also keep this, the strength of this corner. I also relieved all of the edges and I relieved the edges of the holes on this side to make it easy to press this guy into place and to line up your hole saw, uh, but they are straight hard edges on the flush side that sits against the door. Um, these two windows, uh, they are this shape so that this guy can print without any supports. Um, these are angles that can be you know, printed with I think just about any FDM printer that is out there without any supports. Um, and then we have a small window that is designed for just the tip of a pen or the tip of a pencil uh, to slip through and allow you to mark it. Uh, it's also the right size for looking through as a window if your door is already marked on the end. Um, the width that this is, it's really easy just with the human eye to be able to get the center point of it easily um, without second guessing yourself. Okay, I think that's it for the design for this. Like everything I feature on this channel, uh, the design for this will be available completely free in STL format on my site, fpfdesigns.com. I'll link that down in the description of this video. I'll also link to that carbide tipped stare at bit that I use to bore the holes for this uh, and to the bearings uh, that I use to press into uh, this piece up here. Uh, if this was useful to you, if you enjoyed this, hit that like button. I do a new video like this every single Friday. So if you enjoyed it, consider subscribing. Guys, thanks for tuning in and I will catch you next Friday. Mm -hmm.